Sir David Attenborough, ladies and gentlemen. How lovely to see you again, and thank you so much. It's always a thrill for me when you come on the show and agree to be interviewed, so thank you so much. Um, you're just back, am I right? You're just back from China, just recently returned from China? China, yeah. And been filming out there, or is this a, a filming, holiday? Yeah. Okay, what, 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 what series is this for? Fossils. Uh -huh. Feathered dinosaurs. Wow. Yeah, wonderful. Because the birds, I believe, they have more in common with dinosaurs than most of the other animals. They don't. are descendants of dinosaurs. I, f I don't believe that, I'll be honest with you. Get off. Well, I've seen, <laughs> I've seen dinosaurs in films, and they're much bigger for a start. You ever chased by an ostrich? Um, actually, you know what? I have. There you are. Then you believe it. So did dinosaurs have feathered feathers? Absolutely. Bellen? All of them, even like the T-Rex? Not Rex. all of them. Not all of them. The big brontosaurs didn't. Wow. But the smaller ones did. And you've got these wonderful fossils in which you see... If you saw just the bones, you would say, that's a dinosaur. And, but they've now got specimens in which you can see the imprint of the feathers all around. And is this a new interest of yours, the whole idea of uh, fossils and tracing animals back that far? No, You've always been no into it, it was actually one of my first, really. I was brought up in the Midlands and uh, I looked for fossils as a kid and I've never stopped, really. And do you, did you have a fossil collection when you were a young man? Uh, I have a few. Okay. A few. A few legal ones. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you smoked all the West, I imagine. <laughs> 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 um, uh, so this is for another TV series. Um, yeah. What a productive period this has been for you, because there are three shows that have been on at the moment, well, two are still on. I'm afraid so, yeah. Uh, and two more coming this year, is that yes, right? Yes, that's right. Wow, incredible. I mean, that's a remarkable workload for well... anyone. But... <laughs> when the offers are there, you have to take them, don't uh, you? Tell me about it. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> And so, uh, the one we have on the moment, Africa, we see there, you're doing the one in China with fossils. Mm. What, what's the other show that you're making this year, the one that you haven't filmed yet or that we haven't seen yet? There's um, one about fossils, as you say, and there's one about insects, which I'm doing. OK, and where are you filming that? All over the world? All or? over the world, well, yeah. uh, And what uh, sort of new angle will you take on insects? Yeah, well, that's in 3D. Uh, I don't know if you know this, you probably don't, but Sir David Attenborough is, I think, the only person to have won a BAFTA in uh, the black and white television category, back in the days when it was all black and white, in colour, He's also on a BAFTA for a high-definition programme and a 3D television programme. <laughs> and I think that shows the span of your career and the quality of your output, which the fact that it's so good. So, insects in 3D. And yet, you're, I mean, I guess you're an animal... Uh, would you call yourself an animal lover, or is it just a, a, an academic interest? I'm absolutely interest? fascinated by animals, that's right. I mean, the word lover is a sort of, you know, a funny old word. Uh, I, I, <laughs> well, it is, isn't it? Yeah. I mean... Uh, I, I don't love I don't love snails particularly, no. but but they are very interesting actually. They're Have you ever seen snails mating? I, you know what? I, well, <laughs> I, I've probably seen them on one of your shows yes. doing that kind of thing. But slugs I are even more exciting. I saw one creature. Like a... <laughs> yeah. yeah. See, I'm a bit worried about the level of enthusiasm you're showing for the mating habits and stuff. <laughs> uh, but when you're filming. Do you get to see that firsthand, that kind of thing, or is it always you see what the cameraman's brought back? Oh, nearly always it's what the cameraman's done. I mean, I sometimes have the privilege of writing the, writing the scripts, you know, and I say, uh, you know, close up, uh, lion, as it approaches something like this. Yeah. And they say, how do you expect to get that? And I say, that's your problem, mate. <laughs> <Sorry."> <laughs> uh, but they do get some incredible shots. Oh, I'm a, the cameraman of the heroes. Yeah. I'm amazed that um, even now, you know, you think about the amount of uh, footage that uh, Sir David has introduced to us, you're still finding new things, you're still capturing new things on film, aren't you? Tell yeah. us some of the new discoveries that you've made or your team have made for you to present. Oh, well, they discovered a, um, uh, I say they discovered, but, but they learned about a wonderful place in, in Africa that should be nameless, where rhinos assemble in, in six, eight, ten pairs. I mean, just wonderful. And in the moonlight, wonderful sight. And they used, they used starlight cameras and got wonderfully evocative images. So presumably before this they didn't know that they gathered in that way? They or didn't know. And then they behave in this gentle way. Well, you saw that little bit with that little... Which is beautiful. That sweet little thing was born blind, you know, um, uh, which is actually apparently quite common. And they now have an operation whereby you can cure the blindness in a, in a young baby rhino. And, and, and that's when he's a little bit older, he'll go for that. Wow. I wouldn't have known that. Um, how difficult is it? You know, you mentioned the, the bravery and certainly the dedication of the cameramen you work with. Um, how risky is it what they're doing? I mean, presumably sometimes they are in very real danger. For me, hardly at all. <laughs> but for um, but the cameramen, they, well, they've got to start with, they've got a camera, you know. 
uh, and that's quite, and, and the funny thing is when you're looking down a camera, you get absorbed in the program and you forget you will see you will see and you forget that it's going on yeah. down there. And even when it starts to run towards you, you think this is a terrific shot. Yeah. And you suddenly really look up and it's only just about <laughs> five yards away. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, they 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 are the heroes. I mean, amazing. And in the new, uh, I saw uh, the the episode of Africa. I went, the first one I saw was in the Congo, in the rainforest in Congo. And I saw that there was a scene. Your cameraman almost got knocked out of a tree by an elephant. Yes, yeah. At night, didn't he? Well, they're very bright animals, very clever animals. Uh, and the and the elephant knew he was up there, uh, and didn't like it. Do you know what he didn't like about it? Is it just because he was in his territory? He just didn't like it. I mean, elephants elephants are like that. They've they've got very different personalities. Uh, very, they can be very cranky. I mean, um, the last program that's coming up, which is about conservation, is shot on the slopes of Mount Kenya, and the elephants since time immemorial used to graze on the on the down in the lowlands, and then in the summer they would go up into the highlands and the, on the higher slopes of Mount Kenya. And then a few years ago they built a big road right across their track, in which lorries were going. And the elephants were causing terrible trouble. I mean, some were killed and so on. So one or two conservationists said, why don't we build a tunnel going under the road? And others said, that would never work. But they built it. And all the elephants within, like a fortnight, learnt to go under through, wow. the, through the tunnel, except one cranky old bull. And you could see him, you know. He said, I'm bugging if I'm going up. <laughs> And so he stayed, he stayed down there, knocking down the plants as plantations. So he just refused I mean, that's, to... That's typical of elephants. They're very different characters. Bloody-minded. Yeah, bloody-minded. Uh, well, like humans, I suppose. Yeah, that's right. And that brings me to a, a different question, because I, I, occasionally people obviously ask you questions about the state of the planet and your, whether you believe in climate change, whether you believe that that's happening, whether you believe that the preservation of animals is necessary, whether you should let them fend for themselves. Would you save humans over other animals? Do you think the planet would be better off without us? If we behave better, we're capable of behaving better than we're doing at the moment. We aren't fully aware of the consequences of what we're doing most of the time. Uh, and if we behave better, we have the power to make everything better for everything else, which is more than you can say for almost any other species. So we have the potential of making things much better. At the moment, we're making them much worse. So it's time we wised up. It's time we took responsibility for our action. I don't think anyone would disagree with that, and it's lovely to hear it from you. Um, David's new series at the moment, or one of the new series, but the one that's just started, is called uh, David Attenborough's Natural Curiosities. It's on Tuesdays on the Eden Channel. I saw the first episode the other night. Yeah. Uh, a fabulous. And, and this is a first for you, in a way, as well, isn't it? It's the first time you've shot a series entirely yeah, in the UK. It's, 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 a nice, it's a nice mixture, really, because it not only talks about animals, but it talks about the history of animals, the discovery of animals, the romance of animals, how animals work... And, Focused on particular species. I mean, I love lizards generally, but chameleons fascinate me because, you know, you grow up thinking about them changing their colour, but of course there is so much truth in it. It's not some sort of myth. They actually do change, don't they? Oh, yeah. OK. I've got something under my desk for you. Look at this little fella here. <laughs> Let me pass them over to you. And they're arboreal, so they like to be high, don't they? So I think if I go down low and you put your finger there, look at that, and you've, you've handled these little fellas before, of course. I love the way the hands work. They're kind of like... It's almost like they have two big they fingers. They are but... among the most beautiful things in the world. Look at that. Look at he's climbing up onto you there. Come on. Look at that. Look at that. And they change their colour when threatened, or indeed when they wish to threaten, when they want to impose their will on another yeah, animal. Yeah, they, they get angry. If they get angry, they go black. This chap's not in the least angry. <coughs> and he's a, isn't he just one of the most beautiful things? Look at that. Come on, then. Do you want to travel? Oh, I've got a little tiny fella here. Look at this one here. And so they, they like to be high, is that right? So if you put him on my shoulder, he'll probably, he'll probably like that, I think. And also he makes for... Oh, no, hold it, he's... <laughs> Why, he's defying nature, this beast. <laughs> I think we found it. Look at that. Look at his little... Wow. And they don't cohabitate happily, do they? I believe they like to be on their own, if they're... They, uh, yeah, they are solitary hunters, by and large. And, of course, the great thing about them is that they have this fantastic... <laughs> <laughs> I used to have a tame one, and I used to take him out in the garden in London, and uh, it had this huge tongue, of course. And I used to I used to point him at a fly 
sitting on a flower, and you go, <laughs> see, and wallop, get the fly. Wow. We should say, I mean, people, I mean, I'm falling in love with this little fella here. I don't think the feeling's mutual, but <laughs> we should point out that they don't make suitable pets, and these are from a rescue centre. So I think people had them as pets, and they were taken in, and they've been looked after now. They were born in this country, though. That's the great thing about these. Their eyes, I believe, are they unique in that their eyes can face in different directions they at do. the same time? And what's more, they have an extraordinary brain so that it flicks in a matter of microseconds from one eye to the other eye. So it builds up a, a double picture. So it can be looking up and wow. looking down at the same time. He's giving me uh, what we call the stink eye, this one over here. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we're going to take a break. And will you join me in saying thank you, not just to our two chameleon friends, but also the one and only Sir David Attenborough. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.